starting to be uh, in the Union Foster from Madison County. Um, she's been with Madison County for 23 years. She's very retiring, very excited about that. She's very active on the Elementary Cycling Association Board. I'm sure has a whole host of other accomplishments um, to her name. Um, you all hear from the Key Contract, and we see on insurance. Um, I don't know what she's currently titled, but she dies. Packet that I have some examples here. 
um, some, some ideas, some activity sheets, what's composting, some things that they could use in their classroom to get the kids excited about what was going to happen at their lunchtime. So that was very, very important. The next one. Uh, I put together a, a paper for them to work on, handed this out to various classrooms, that they were to decide which could go in the blue tone, which could be composted, which goes in the trash can. Just something that they could circle, work on, to get an idea that we were going to change how they did their lunches. Okay. This shows our problem at breakfast. Breakfast is carted down to each classroom in a cooler because there's too many kids to be in the cafeteria all at one time. So every classroom gets their own toter with breakfast. And look at all the packaging. So our challenge was the packaging at breakfast and what to do with all of that packaging. We could go to the extreme of pouring the milk into another container in the hallway. And we'll show you how that all works at lunchtime. Next one. <laughs> She's so thrilled to be there. <laughs> typical lunch at a typical school. Notice that we have reusable trays. That's a plus. But we have, and I don't know if you can see it real well, but we have this little situation right here, that spork inside a plastic container with a straw and a napkin. Now, my sleeve has always worked well as a napkin. So we had to also get into the packaging and the materials that they were using and say, what can we eliminate from your waste stream to get you more towards zero waste? Because there's some things we just can't compost or recycle. So those are some of the problems that we were dealing with. So because the school already had single stream recycling with their public services, the kids were used to already separating their recyclables. All of those milk cartons were not compostable, but yet they were already being pulled out for single stream recycling. So that's an issue that you need to work with individually with your, with your service, who's ever doing your composting, if they'll take the milk cartons or not, what items they take, and what you can do to, to lower it to zero waste. Okay. So here's our setup. Now, what made the school work out so well is that red table, and all that was already there when we walked in. That's why we could say, we're going to start Monday, because there was already something already set up. So we have the trash cans, the milk carton paper and plastics that they're used to pouring the milk out into the buckets and then at the very end we have where the food scraps go. And you can see some of my signage. So we tried all kinds of ways to get the kids used to what are food scraps. We said it's like nature. So we use monitors to actually stand in line and assist the kids at the very, very beginning. Now what makes this unique is the cafeteria is very small, so they come in in small groups. The cafeteria monitors when the, the hour, the lunch time is over, turn off the lights, okay, and all the kids are sitting here, and they remind them, now this is what you have today to eat, this is where it goes. You know, put your hamburger, what's left, and the pizza, into the compost. So there was a reminder there. But the more you reminded, then the easier it got. So this shows you the kids doing their thing. Here originally is our monitor, who's Mr. Doug Bogart. He's the director of buildings and grounds, and he was the one that said, we're going to do this. We want to do this. So even the littlest kid from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade is how many kids are in this building. They learn the process. Okay. Thanks to company and Mr. Cliff Roberts sitting in the back, Always Green Recycling comes three times a week to each school, each of the three schools, and takes the totes, they takes them back to their facility, and they take them to a different facility. Um, this in fact, put new bags in, and we don't even have to touch any of that. This is our data. Um, I made the slide before I got the May data, because I love it before June. Um, 
showing the progression. Once we started the program in November, and we only did a half a month, America Recycles Day is November 15th, and how it progressed through each building. Uh, Eastwood Elementary is the largest of them, of them all. That's one with 500, and you can see the progression. Where it dips, spring break, and we had snow days during that time. It went right back up after that. So that's how many tons of food scrap were collected over the period from November to April. This is St. Louis composting, where Cliff takes his uh, takes our food scrap. Um, I visited. Um, I was told that this is like a taco, and they actually have uh, dirt and old landscape waste that they collect all during the summertime, and they make a great big mound, and then they run a hole down the middle of it, and all the food scraps go in there, and it's covered, so it's like the taco, uh, your meat, and everything is covered up. And then the result is compost. You tell the kids that what they put in the first day, there's 180 days of school, this is just about ready to be used as compost. Okay. Uh, purpose of our pilot, <laughs> use the trash, cost, move towards zero waste. Also looking at eating utensils from plastic to washable, elimination of some of that waste that we can't recycle, but the, the napkins did go in with the compost, the straws, of course, do not. Um, buy more items in golf, uh, save landfill space, became a habit with the young adults, and we have enrichment of soil with the compost. I actually also made myself available to go in for teaching lessons, and I took in a Burby composting bin for the worms. The kids loved it, and then they all got bags of the actual compost so they could go home and tell mom and dad, this was my lunch 180 days ago. Um, we feel that the program was highly successful. Uh, I have yet to meet with Cliff and um, Virgil Moore, the superintendent, and Doug Bogart to sit down and look at our finances because this was all a pilot program with Madison County, so we paid the bill. Now they're on their own. So we want to show the economics of it, the lowering of the trench costs, and see if it's feasible for them to continue. The next portion of my job, if I would stay, but I'm not, but I'm leaving it for the next person, is to develop a grant program where other schools now in the district and I should say countywide, can take this pilot and put it in their own school. And Madison County would offer grants to assist in this program so that they could show the economic value of taking the food scraps out of the waste stream, lowering their trash costs enough to pay for the offset of the time. Okay. Last slide. Pull the bag inside, no fruit flies can generate, right. and it does keep the odor down. 